In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use an audio mixing board. Basically, an audio mixing board is the central nervous system of your studio. It's where all audio is routed to and from the mixer. And you may not need one in this day and age. An interface has built-in preamps, but I personally like using a mixing board because it offers greater control. And plus, it allows you to do live sound gigs, which you can't do with an audio interface. Well, you can, but it's a little bit less practical. Um, so here we, go, here we go, I'm gonna get off screen pretty much for the rest of the video because we need to talk about a lot of different controls. All right, so this is our mixing board that we're gonna be using during this tutorial. On the table here, we have a few different accessories that will be plugged into this mixer. And to get started, we have to plug in our power supply, which is this little thing right here. And I'm just gonna do it as if you guys weren't here and I wasn't really explaining anything. So it just goes in one way. You gotta look for, there's a notch and in like that. Make sure your phantom power and your power switch are off before plugging it in, obviously. And then hit your power, things light up. And right away I can say, get the solo off of that and the mutes off of these. So here's our lovely mixing board. And I have one other thing I have to do in order for this whole thing to work, this whole tutorial to work. And that is I need to plug in the mix out into my audio interface. So to do that, I'm gonna use what are known as TRS phono plugs. And the way you distinguish TRS from their, their other brethren, I can't say that word right now, is this part right here. This is just TS, so that's tip sleeve. And this is tip ring sleeve or something like that. Anyway, the bottom line is, the one on the left, the gray one, is unbalanced. This one is balanced, so you have less noise. You, if you have the option with your mixer board, and pretty much all of them support TRS balance cables, um, at least the really crappy ones may not use TRS cables, absolutely. So actually, I'm putting that to the side. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to record the mixing board along with my lavalier microphone that I have plugged in my camera right now. So nothing's plugged in right now. So I'm gonna go in to the output, our main output left, and then I'm gonna run this cable. This is gonna go into my left input, which is input number one on the interface. All right, and then TRS cable number two, and yes, they are a little bit more expensive than TS cables, but that's just how it is. And this is gonna go, obviously, into input number two of the Audient ID14. Now, because the Audient ID14 has the preamps within the line input, I have to actually set that to a certain level. And what that means is I need to run this, which has a tone generator in it, so on our cable tester here, we can see we have three different output levels and I'm gonna set this to the mic input and I'll set it to one kilohertz. There's options for that as well, but it involves pressing one of these buttons down here. Um, yeah, in this case, yeah, you hit the reset button. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is, see, I turn that on to test tone and then I press that button and when it's off, it's 440. When it's on, it's one kilohertz. And I'm gonna do with all this off camera. Actually, you know what? I, I should I should do this. This is kind of important in case you guys have to do this. So this is what the XLR looks like. I'll pull it out again just so you can see it. So on the output, well, the input side for the mixer, this is what it looks like. Three prongs and then, come on into the microphone or whatever your output is. This is the female end. XLR F, this is XLR M. And then it goes in like that. Your mixer board might look different. Uh, by the way, that's another thing I, I forgot to mention. Your mixer board will look different, obviously. It will operate a little bit differently, but these all are basically universal principles. Okay, so on our cable tester, 
I'm going to put my test tone on. And again, my mic level's there. And I want one kilohertz. So all I'm going to do now is bring up my, my gain knob. Actually, I forgot to put this in solo. So solo it, put that up. And I can't see those numbers because of that light is glaring off of it. Normally that's not the case. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher. So it's right on zero like that. Take it off of solo mode, bring up the fader like that. And bring up my mix, my main mix knobs right here. All right, I'm gonna look into seeing if this is actually working or not. It should be, and it's not. At least it's not showing up there. So at this point, I'm gonna bring it up. Okay, it is actually outputting. It's just not showing up on the meter for some reason. Uh, I have the screen capture software going right now, and it's showing that I have output on both of my meters. So I'm just gonna roll with this and go to my armed, and going to both of my channels here. And we definitely have an alignment issue, but like I said, this is all about adjusting the audience levels. So I'm gonna adjust my, uh, my left channel first, channel one. So my goal is to get this at around negative 20. And then my left channel, I'm gonna bring it up as well. There we go, they're both at negative 20.1. So, cable tester's getting pulled out and I'm gonna actually now put it in. Ugh. Man, that's, that's hard to pull out sometimes. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side, the cable tester, and now, I'll show you plugging in a microphone. Very, uh, very interesting. Let's see what that looks like. <laughs> okay, so like I said, female in like that. There's only way one way to do it. And I'm gonna put it right back on my mic clip. All right, back on the mixer board, we have our XLR input, as I was showing you with the microphone input, and we have our line input. Now, Obviously you would use a phono cable like this. A TR, this is TS, TRS is also um, available. And you know that because it says bow or unbow, standing for balanced or unbalanced. Obviously, whenever you can, use a balanced line input. TRS all the way. Next up we have what's called a low cut filter, also called normally a high pass filter. This one is at 75 hertz and I believe it's 18 decibel per octave low cut switch. I would not use it on this board unless I was mixing live. And the reason is on these cheaper mixing boards, the filter is not as good as if you were using software or a better one on a better mixing board. So normally I have this off when I'm recording or if, like I said, if I'm doing something live, then I'll only have it off on the bass guitar, the kick drum, uh, maybe a synth or a keyboard, something like that where mic rumble isn't an issue or just, you know, popped peas. You know, you want to have that low end on your bass channels. Next up, I already talked about this. This is our, it's called trim or gain. It's called gain on here. It's called gain, gain on Mackie boards. What this does is it, it raises the volume. Actually, the input signal is the correct term. It raises the amount of input signal from our inputs. So, you know, Mike, obviously, we're going to have it pretty high. If you look closely, these are also marked. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, the light is putting it in shadow, but it says plus four and negative 10, and that's our line level distinctions. I'll link to a video in the video description of the difference between professional line level and consumer line level, but that's what those are referring to. So I'm going to set a level. Now on this mixer board and on the Mackie as well, we have two different modes over here. It says solo and PFL, and that stands for pre-fader listen. 
When we're setting levels, we wanna have this button switched out. Right now it's switched in, I just pressed it. So switch it out. That puts us in pre-fader listen mode. <clears throat> and that is the preferred mode for setting levels. So what I'm gonna do, and this is why it's important to do it this way, you can have the fader all the way down. If you can't see that, I'm, I'm sorry. The faders are all the way down to negative infinity, and I'm gonna set my level by pressing this solo button right here. And then see that yellow light comes on? And what does that say? It says PFL, okay? Even though this is in solo mode, this is in pre-fader listen mode so that we're only getting any of the channels that are in this. A channel is basically this entire strip right here. It just refers to one track of audio, basically. So when I raise my level up, so I'm gonna take my microphone off of the clip right now and just start talking into it. Right now I have absolutely no signal because it's all the way down. But let's say I'm singing or I'm just giving a voiceover. So to see now I'm bringing it up a little bit and you can see here, I'll, I'll use my other hand. You can bring it up and it's giving me signal and I wanna have my signal peaking no higher than like negative six. So it's hard to see these numbers. Check one, two, check. Hello, this is Adam, this is Adam, this is Adam. So right around there somewhere should be good for you. Check, check, check. Yeah, this only goes to negative seven. So um, you don't wanna go much higher than that peaking, but and your average levels wanna be under zero. So once I set my level, I can uh, click this off and I'm in regular mode. So at this point, if I wanna bring my channel up, I will bring the fader up like so. Obviously we got a signal going in there and we wanna keep it there for now. And by the way, if you don't have, if you didn't have these fader, I'm not going to touch these, but if you didn't have these up, they, they have to come up at this point. So now we have an audio signal and that's great. So again, we, I could press this and get rid of all the low end. Check, check, check. One, two, three, one, two, three. You might've heard the difference. Maybe not. And then we have our EQs. So I can boost the high end. Check, check, check. And it sounds nasty. Check, 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 check. I can reduce it so it sounds really lo-fi. I'm trying to make it so I can show, the, show this to you guys. Check, check, check. I'm putting it back to the normal level. By the way, when you set levels, you want to have your EQs all the way straight up. And I didn't do that. I had my mids actually reduced. So that was that was bad of me to not look at that. A lot of, the, a lot of these knobs got hit when I was moving it around earlier. So you should always want to have your EQ like that. And then let's say I want to boost my low end. Unfortunately, on this mixing board, our options of EQ are very limited. Plus, the equalizer itself isn't really the greatest. Um, it's Behringer gear. What can I say? Um, you know, if you want better, you should spend more money. So um, we we do unfortunately have the ability to choose our center frequency in the mid range band. And we, the way we do that is with this knob right here. So we pick our mid-range option, wherever you want to have it. Now, usually what I'll do is I'll actually boost this all the way up. Whoa. And then I'll find my frequency that I want, like that. And I think it just crackled. So as you can hear, it's affecting the tone of my voice. As I sweep around, check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. And then once I find my frequency, I can cut it. Check, check. Right there. Now, I can't actually hear how good or bad that is because my computer speaker is actually the one that's in the back of the computer, not my normal speakers, the back of them. Even if they were being output through my normal speakers, that really wouldn't be useful for me right now because I'm not sitting in front of those speakers. So I'm just gonna set all these back to flat, 12 o'clock position. Next up, we have our auxiliary sends. Now these two switches have an option that lets us send either pre-fader, so before this is moved around. So I could have this all the way down, and as long as this is pressed in, like so, I'll have signal coming out. Now, I do have to keep it at zero, at the, uh, the 12 o'clock position 
for this to go onto auxiliary one. But as long as I have this button pressed in, this fader could be down and it doesn't matter. And that's actually what you want. If let's say you're doing live sound and you have your auxiliary sending to a stage monitor or ideally to somebody who has in-ear monitors, that's what you would send. You would send pre-fader listen or pre-fader so that whenever you make adjustments, it's not making adjustments to their stage monitors. If they need more level, you adjust it right here. Not down here, you or, or up here, you adjust it with the, with the auxiliary. So if they're like, I wanna hear more, uh, more snare drum, you adjust it with this down here, not with the rest of these. Unfortunately, this board's small compared to ones that have like four or six or eight auxiliary sends. So next up after, oh, so this one actually cannot be set to a pre-fader position. It is always post-fader. So this is only good for like an effects mix or something like that. If you do use the auxiliaries for effects, you want to have this out. So you want to have it post-fader. Otherwise you'll run into weird issues with your wet signal sounding weird, wet be meaning the effect, like reverb or delay being louder than your dry signal. And that just doesn't sound right. So you wanna, if you're using the auxiliaries for effects, you wanna have it post fader. And then next up we have our pan pot, our pan nub. But yeah, that's what I meant to say earlier. These are also known as pots, but I call them knobs because that's what I call them. But a uh, pot is short for pot to pot tentometer. Anyway, it's not important. What's important is this is our stereo pan position. And uh, when I'm recording, I don't normally touch this at all, except to hear what overheads sound like when they're hard pan on drums. And uh, also I'll pan these if I'm miking like a stereo acoustic guitar or something else in stereo. I might do it just for fun, but for uh, for live mixing, you definitely typically will use these. Um, maybe, maybe not. I do. I personally use the pan pots when live mixing, but I rarely live mix. Anyway, on to our next button. It's our PF slash solo button. And you saw me use that to set levels. And this is also used for four when you have this button over here in solo mode and you press this, what this enables you to do is to hear just that channel. And I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see these knobs a little bit better now. So it's, it lights up, unless your light's broken, but if it's pressed in, it's in solo mode. And what I can do is then hear through my headphones or my control room speakers or live mix room speakers, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's a, a third output on this thing that will let you hear just that channel or any other channel that you press solo on. So if I had those three lit up, you could hear just those three channels. But typically you wanna do this to diagnose any problems you have. Let's say uh, you start hearing noise, you start hearing crackling, some kind of problem with your audio and you wanna hear that, you know, figure out what's going on. You press your solo button and that will allow you to hear it just for that. And you gotta to remember to press this, the button and I'll zoom, it, I'll zoom out now so you can see the whole board. You gotta to remember to press this button right here to get you into the two different modes. And if I have that on, see now it's in the pre, it's in a level setting mode. If I put, press it in, it's in my solo mode. And you can't hear it right now because I had the fader down, but once I push it up, check, 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 one, two, three. Okay, that, you know what? I just figured out why it wasn't showing stereo. <laughs> Cause it wasn't in that mode or maybe it was okay. Well, either way it's, it, um, I don't know why it's only showing on one channel. I don't, I really don't know why check it, it's not. Oh, well, so I'll, I'll put this down again. So I don't hear myself on the computer on the back of this mixer. You have an insert for the first eight channels. So that lets you use outboard gears, what it's called outboard hardware outboard meaning out of the mixing board. And so you can have a better equalizer than the one that's built into this. You can have a compressor on the channel. 
You can have anything else you can think of that is not built into this mixer can be inserted into the signal path and it's actually pre-EQ and pre-fader as well. I don't know if it's post low cut or not, but um, you can find out by running a signal through it and hearing if the, if the low end goes down or not. But yeah, that's very important for not just an insert point, but we can also take those insert points and record each channel in isolation. That's actually typically how I have the Mackie board set up at Studio B. And you know, it's just a good little setup to have. It's a good option to have because you don't always have that luxury of insert points. On my other mixing board, I didn't have any inserts at all. So this one does have that and that's how I would record. You know, I don't record just the stereo output. I don't record the stereo output of this at all. I record the inserts from the channel. And that also sounds better because we're bypassing the EQ and the fader circuits. The closer we are to the output of the preamp, the better. Um, and also, you oh, I forgot to mention, you do need to have um, some outboard gear supports TRS cables, so you can only, you only want to plug in one cable, but otherwise you need to have a TRS cable that splits into two TS cables, so a stereo into a mono cable, basically. And what that does is it lets us send and return. And if you look closely on the back of this thing, it actually says on it, tip equals send and ring equals return. So that's how the cable has to be wired for it to work properly. Up here, we have, it's uh, our, send, our, our stereo send, our stereo returns, and we also have stereo line input. Now, they don't have to be stereo. You can just plug it into the left one and then it becomes dual mono. So two mono signals at the same time of the same signal. Or um, we have our auxiliary sends as well. So like I was saying, all these knobs that control the auxiliaries, the, the green knobs in this case, they send out the signal. That's what you would plug your, that's your output. And then again, more stereo inputs. And unfortunately, here's where the change is. There's no mid sweepable mid range. You only have uh, on this, it's three kilohertz and 500 hertz for the mid range. You don't have, a, and these are not variable Q. According to the manual, the Q is one octave. Now, again, it's a cheaper board, so you don't have those options. But your mixer board may have those options. Variable Q is basically it controls how wide or how narrow your boost or your cuts are. Very useful feature, and that's why I prefer nowadays digital mixing boards because those are built in and you can have those. It's a very nice feature to have, and analog variable Q equalizers are they're simply expensive. Okay, next up, we have our tape in and output. So we have an RCA capable connector. I used to use this a lot until I found out that Phono was the way to go and RCA is, um, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. But we have that if we need it. So again, RCA input and output, stereo, useful if you have somebody who wants to record like let's say you're doing a live show and uh, a lot of times people will give you rca stuff and you can just plug them right in here but what i want to show you right now was these two right here this is important when i first started using a mixer board at studio b i had my cables routed the wrong way and i actually ended up almost damaging the interface i, I forget why i think oh it was because we had to use these weird adapters for it for some reason and um so anyway what i ended up changing was it was being sent from the main mix output and i changed it so that it was going to from the control room output right here and what that enabled us to do is i could adjust everything with the knob down here which i, I uh is off screen right now but this knob well <laughs> on this board the control room and the headphones levels are controlled by one knob, but on the better Mackie board, they're controlled separately. But this is where you want to plug 
your control room speakers so that you can adjust the volume from right here. And then the second thing I want to show you is to the right of that. So right here, again, we have a TRS plug just like that. And to keep it a little bit more organized, I'll put my headphones over here. And nothing, nothing complicated about that. It's just a quarter inch phono output. So I wanna come down here to our final sections, which is where our meter is actually. So let's see, we have at the top, we have our auxiliary returns. So these control the level coming in. Now it has an interesting option down here. This is called FX to auxiliary one. So let's say our Q mix, I'll call it a Q mix, but it, it's the in-ear monitors or the stage monitors. Let's say that that person wanted to hear the reverb. Well, I don't want the reverb to be that loud on, their mi on the actual mix that the audience is hearing. So I could send that to them so that they hear it. And it, you know, singers, a lot of times they like to hear reverb just for confidence reasons. They sound better, um, you know, and it gives them confidence to sing better, to sing louder, to sing with more energy. And we, we can give them that with this button. Now you gotta be careful though, because you can create a feedback loop with that. But normally I would have this set so that, because you're so limited on channels, auxiliary one would actually just get, I would put the reverb on a different channel because I have way more channels over here. And like I said, I don't like using the stereo inputs. I'm gonna actually pan down now or, or tilt down to here. Now I'm missing the knob cover on this volume control, but this would normally look like all these other ones. And this controls the output of the headphones, controls the output of the control room speakers, the volume level. Okay, then we also have our auxiliary sends. So the, again, these control just, it's just an, a, another level control. And we have, I think it's uh, infinity to, pu to plus 15 decibels of gain. Typically you wanna have that at zero if you can avoid having to boost it because whenever you boost these cheaper channels, you just add more noise. And that also goes for the faders as well. The faders, although you can go up to uh, another 10 decibels on the faders, you really wanna increase or decrease your volume with the trim or gain knob in this case. Now down here, we have some options for what we hear in the control room. So if I just wanted to hear my alternative mix, which by the way, you, you, you get that by pressing the mute button. And at that point, whatever's muted becomes a part of this alt three, four channel. So I can audition that or listen to that into the, in the headphones. And let's see. So I hear my main mix, the alternative mix or the RCA inputs. And we can also put our tape inputs to the mix. And I'm looking for a button that lets us control what the mix actually gets and I don't see it. So some mixer boards will actually let you control what gets sent into the mixing, into the mix. Um, but this one doesn't for whatever reason. And also the, the subgroup here, the alt, the alt three, four is very limited in what you can do on the Mackie board. It, there's actually four different inputs or, or four different faders that you control, which work really well for drums. I'll, I'll show you a close up of the main mix faders down here. And well, I don't know why they're set like that, but it doesn't even matter. Normally I would have them set equally. I just couldn't see it because I'm not in front of the board like I normally am. I'm like leaning over it. <laughs> but I usually I have it right at zero. And you know, that's called unity gain. Again, you don't want to boost it, even though, even though I can bring them up. I don't want to boost them like that, you know? Because fader gain sounds nasty on cheap boards and most boards do have cheap components until you get to the really expensive level and then maybe you can get away with it but I still would advise against it if you can. So, one other thing I guess I should mention as I try to figure out where to zoom out from, I'll just go right about here and zoom out. 
So, we got our big board, all right? Now, what are we missing from this? Down here, normally you put board tape and board tape is specially designed so that you can tear it off night after night. And you would put your input names. So B for bass or K for kick drum, S N for snare and so on and so on. GTR for guitar, VX for vocals. And I could go on and on. Um, you, you come up with your own shorthands for different inputs, but that's where your tape would go right there. And then you just, you know, divide it. You put lines down here so it's a little bit easier to see. And also I think they sell, I think you could get a glow-in-the-dark marker so that you can see that even when there's no light <laughs> or pen, something like that. But uh, yeah, that's the basics for the mixing board. And I guess I should see if there's anything else left to say. Oh yeah, there is a button that's missing from the back of this thing that uh, it controls whether the, the main output is mic level or line level. 99 times out of 100, you wanna have that on line level. So you wanna have that on this one, you, you have the button out, so it's disengaged. You have that option just in case whatever you're sending this mixing board to doesn't support line input. If it doesn't support line input, it's probably piece, a piece of junk but you may run into that problem and you at least have that option. Uh, pro tip, do not run a line input signal into a mic input. Otherwise, you're gonna have possible gear damage. Um, uh, I may or may not have done that myself. <laughs> not on this board, on, on another piece of gear. And uh, I learned my lesson from that. Here's another tip, do not Put phantom power on, which I'll do right now, so you can at least see the see the, uh, the light. So it comes on right there. Do not turn that on and then plug in your microphones. That is a newbie mistake, and you can you can damage your microphones. The same goes for disconnecting your microphones. Also, phantom power. Don't use it for ribbon ribbon mics. And this is how to properly do it to turn off your mixer. You ready? Actually, this is how you do it. First, you turn off your speakers. If your speakers aren't off, do not turn your mixer off. Again, I made that mistake my first time doing live sound. I turned off the mixer and all I heard was a big old pop and then a bunch of 60 hertz hum. It was lovely. Everybody looked towards my position and I was embarrassed. So you don't ever want to turn your board off if your speakers are still on. Now. If you have phantom power, turn phantom power off. I just hit the switch. You see that the light's still glowing and that'll glow for around 20 to 30 seconds. You see it's slowly fading down and you wanna wait about 30 seconds before you disconnect any of your microphones that have phantom power. So before you do that, you wanna, and this is something to get into the habit for, turn all your trim, your gain down like that you want to put all your EQs at the 12 o'clock uh, uh, position. So we're resetting the board. We're normalizing the board. Some people call it normalizing. And the last thing, obviously, we, we put our faders all the way down, put the faders all the way down, put the volume on the control room and the headphones down. Then at that point, you can either disconnect the microphones now, which I normally do, after you disconnect the microphones, you can either disconnect them from here or disconnect them from the microphone itself like so. But that's only after you put the gain down and the faders down. Um, I don't know how much of a difference that particularly makes, but I just feel better having my preamp down before I disconnect anything. And then after you disconnect it, again, either, either at this point or at the, the point of the microphone, you can finally turn off your power to the mixer again after the speakers are off and uh, you can wrap it up for the night. Some people like to leave their boards on all the, all the time. I think that's idiotic. I think, you know, running electric, even through solid state gear, 
uh, just is a bad idea. Um, and also, you leave yourself open for a fire. It's not 100% guaranteed, but, I, you know, I don't like leaving things that have electric running on, you know, at, you know, you can leave it plugged in with the power off, but just, you know, this thing heats up. This area right here gets quite hot after a while. Um, again, I don't know if that would ever catch on fire or not. So I just like to turn stuff off. It also stays electric. I hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions for me, I will be open to answering them either in the comments section or in a real home recording mailbag video. I'm sure I missed something and, uh, yep. See you in the next video. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com.